Also, just five shopping days left to Christmas. If you're anything like me, you may still have items to purchase. We've got your guide for last minute Christmas buying. And it wouldn't be the holidays without eating cookies. We've got your secret to guilt free holiday goodies. It's all straight ahead on your Friday lunch break, which starts now. It's your lunch break with Jay Crawford. And hello again, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for lunch break. You are here for a piece of history. I'm Jay Crawford, and for the first time ever, it's Guy Day Friday. Well, like Normally, my, and Mike Polk's in the studio, Mike just said, that sounds like an unpopular bar event. <laughs> True. Yes. Dave Janowski, he would great know. to have yeah. you here, by the way. Well, it is an honor to be here, to be the first guy. Yeah, this is groundbreaking next to you stuff, on, man. Now, we've brewed beer together. We have. And that was a lot of yeah, fun. But I actually have. thought there was going to be lunch here. Yeah, we did, too, uh, when we started the show. Okay. <laughs> That's so. why we're moving to 5 o'clock. No free lunch. We're out of here. All right. Um, very good to have you in. Awesome to be here. Thanks. First up, our lead-off item on the menu, holiday travel is going to be a nightmare. Going anywhere? Yeah. Uh, not like you. I'm about an hour, 20 minutes away for a couple days. AAA Young's counts that area. as travel. If you're in the car for an hour for anything during this holiday stretch, mm -hmm. AAA says you are one of 115 million Americans that will actually travel between tomorrow mm -hmm. and January 1st. That's the most, by the way, in 20 years, so a big travel week. One in three Americans will either get in that car for at least an hour drive or an airplane. Holiday travel, according to Huffington Post, this is just a little guide to help make your life a little easier. They are saying the best and worst times to travel are for today, the peak is 4 o'clock. Try to avoid that if you can. The best time is later in the evening, about 8 p.m. Worst time to travel, actually tomorrow and Sunday. And that makes sense because it's the last weekend before Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. And again, the same thing holds true. You want to try to do your travel earlier in the morning. Or excuse me, that's the worst time, early in the morning. The best time is later in the evening, 4 to 5. So well, if you have that flexibility, it works. Well, first question I want to ask you, and I yeah. always say this on the morning show, okay? How does AAA have any idea what I'm doing, <laughs> all right? If that's I'm not question. flying, how do no. they know whether I'm getting in the car? What Listen, if I, I change my mind and I don't get in the car? <laughs> how do they know this? 115 or 114 million nine hundred ninety-nine thousand nine ninety-nine. Right. Yeah, I don't know how they know this. I really don't. <laughs> I've always wondered. They're going to predict to the number how many people are going to be traveling. I don't know what they use. They probably have some crazy formula, but there you have it, 115 million. Yeah. Unless I mean, Dave changes his mind. Well, and the bottom line is you know this, that if you're going to fly today, tomorrow, Sunday, the day after Christmas, I mean, yeah. be prepared. Yeah. I mean, there's, Get there early. Yeah. And pack light, please, for all the other right. travelers that need room in those overhead bins as well. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good point. You talk about traveling, mm -hmm. right? but there's also shopping that has to be done, Jay. Yeah. Five shopping days left until Christmas. So I ask you, are you done with yours? I am. I'm so proud of myself. Come because on. The whole thing? Dave, I'll tell you, usually I'm not. Now, I, a big assist to my wife. She does a lot of it, but we converse, we talk. I, I kind of make choices for my mom. Uh, and then I do all of my wife's shopping. And the crazy thing is, the day after Christmas is our anniversary. Oh, my. And that sometimes can get lost <laughs> in the weeds. So I always have to make it a point to do some extra special time shopping. You for have to make lists, right? I make I do. lists yeah. because I will get I lost. I'm 85, 90% done. Yeah. I'm in really good shape right now. You now. have young kids still. I do have young kids. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I plan ahead, though. So I knew, and believe me, I'm not going to go to any store without a plan because yeah, no, you'll you get can't. lost. That's crazy. But uh, tomorrow is super. Saturday, which mm -hmm. is the second busiest shopping day of the year. So if you're wow. going to go out tomorrow, be prepared. If you want to avoid the crowds, Kohl's is now open 24 hours a day, seven days a week wow. until Christmas Eve. So maybe go when people are sleeping. If you plan on ordering online, you have Sunday to ship with Amazon Prime and Monday to do one day shipping. But so you pay for that. Yeah. I mean, do you price do online? I did almost everything online this year. Okay. Yeah. I just find it so much easier. And by the way, there's hope for you later in life as your kids get older that you just gift cards it's mm. so simple it's so easy and it's done yeah. and over with but you can't I, do that when they're eight and ten or whatever i love gift cards but my wife is anti-gift card yeah you know i, I think, it, I think it it's a, a guy cool. thing no it, it's it is a guy a, thing yeah it's, it's guy day friday <laughs> huh? exactly. gift, gift cards card for baby. everyone gift cards yeah when you Where's get Paul? one you know if you <laughs> love the money and the, love to pick out your own gifts it's great but I, I i will agree with you my wife is the same way women tend to say that they're a little more impersonal so yeah. there you have it. All right. Um, every Friday, we love to check in with our digital anchor, Stephanie Haney. She always gives us a list of fun and cool things to do this weekend. And Emily, or <laughs> Emily, Stephanie, the pressure is on because 
A lot of Clevelanders are going to have visitors, and the pressure's on to entertain them. So make this weekend guide really good if oh, you can. Oh, it is really good. And I also <laughs> want to say I'm just happy to be here crashing your guy day Friday. We love to have you. You know, Welcome. just joining the crew today. She's but there is on. a lot of holiday-themed <laughs> fun. And if you're into snow sports, tonight's the opening of Boston Mills Brandywine Ski Resorts. And we also have a famous face in town. Tonight in Akron, you can spend an evening with Chevy Chase following a screening of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yes, the Clark Griswold will be here celebrating the 30th anniversary of the movie. That's happening down in Akron, as I said. And after the movie, there will be a live question and answer session. We'll wow. be talking about the making of the movie, plus other films and TV shows that he's done. This is at the Akron Civic Theater tonight at 7 p.m. There are tickets still available. We have that link on WKYC.com. Now, if you don't have enough running around to do, you can take part in the Selfless Elf 5K. Mm. This is the seventh year for this event, and it benefits the Akron Canton Regional Food Bank. It's good for runners and walkers, and they do encourage you to dress up in festive holiday-themed costumes. Word to the wise here, though, they have allowed pets in the past, but this year they are saying no pets, please. The course begins and ends at the Akron Canton Regional Food Bank, and there is race day registration, so if you want to do that, you got to get there at 6.30 in the morning. Otherwise, you can sleep in a little bit. The race starts at 8 a.m. Now, if you need a laugh this weekend, our very own Mike Polk Jr., yep, our Mike is performing in a sketch comedy show on Saturday. It's called A Very Last Call Cleveland Christmas. I think Mike may have written this description himself. They describe it as a chance to ditch the family for a night of drinking and laughter without the next day awkwardness. Hmm. Mike wrote that for sure. Definitely wrote that one. <laughs> Special guest comedian James Brassfield will be joining the Last Call Boys. This is happening at the Winchester Music Tavern in Lakewood. That is Saturday night. Those doors open at 8 a.m. It is recommended you get advanced tickets, of course, because Mike will be there, so it's going to be a hit show, as we know. And then the big event happening this weekend. Sunday is the last home game for our Cleveland Browns, taking on the Ravens for the second time. And they're on a 10-game winning streak. The Ravens, not the Browns. Yeah, last time they lost, we beat them at their place. I know. So they're coming in here like a hornet that's ready to do some damage. Yeah, a lot on the line for Freddie Kitchens, I would think, in these last two games. Yeah. I, see. There was a report before last Sunday's game that he's safe, barring yeah. a major catastrophe. And then his players went out there and delivered the major catastrophe, losing to a three-win team. I think that if Baltimore wins at Cleveland and if they lose at the Bengals to close the year, it could oh. be lights out for Freddie. If we lose to the Bengals, for yeah. sure. Mm. Can I, I just say one thing? Sure. I would go to the last call with Mike Polk Jr. over oh. the Browns game. And I have seen the last I call in too. person. Well. And that's when I knew Mike was the real deal. Yeah. And, I'm, you know, I, and he doesn't need anything to boost his ego. Yeah. But really, it is a great He's show. He's a funny, well, funny guy. you can do both because yeah. the game's at 1 oh. and that's at 8. And Good here's point. a tease for you. Mike's coming up in just a little bit. He's joining. We're graced with his presence in studio today. <laughs> Stephanie, thanks. Edwin is throwing a third lifeline to Clevelanders looking for a life reboot. A third location opened today in the Buckeye Shaker neighborhood. This time it's Edwin's Bakery. If you're not familiar with the concept, Edwin's was started by Brandon Krastowski. He was a chef in Detroit who wanted to make a difference. So he came to Cleveland and opened Edwin's Restaurant. It was the first location is the restaurant there in Shaker Square. That opened in 2013. That was followed by Edwin's Skill Center in 2016. Then Edwin's Butcher Shop opened last year, and now we have Edwin's Bakery. Edwin's houses, trains, and employs formerly incarcerated individuals, giving them a skill and really, Dave, a hope at a successful re-entry into society. Krastowski chose Cleveland because it has higher poverty, poverty rates, higher incarceration rates, and by all measures, it is a huge success. When I'm in the kitchen, I'm at home. I don't care what, who kitchen I'm in, where I'm at in the world, I'm at home. Take it serious, work hard, and it'll all pay off. Your plate is your canvas versus an artist has an actual piece of canvas, a cook has a plate. I got to tell you, um, this is one of those programs that clearly makes a difference. It's a 501c3, so it operates on, on, on donations. But when you talk about something in the community that can truly be of benefit to folks that need it most, I love this concept. Yeah, I really do. I absolutely. think it's wonderful. To make a difference, no doubt. And, and you heard her talk about, too, taking it to another subject, is the, the plate is their canvas. Yeah. And you, They're you, artists. You, it, exactly. I was reading some of the, um, basically, testimonials from formerly incarcerated individuals that have gone through the program, and one of them said, I've learned more in six months here than I had 10 years behind bars. 
rehabilitation. It can work. All right, moving on. Have you ever used the force? You know, I, no. May I have, not, with you, I have not used the force. I've dreamt of having you. a lightsaber, but I've never used the force. Yeah. Well, it is finally here. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker hit theaters last night, and the reviews are mixed. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 58%, but fans gave it a rating of 86%. I think they were completely wrong. So, it was better than The Last Jedi. I thought it was a great movie. I mean, it fixed a lot of the stuff from the last movie, a lot of cool new stuff. Well, Jay, I ask you this. The critics, I don't always buy what they have to say. No, they're horrible. The critics said Frozen 2 was not going to be that great. Yeah. I went and saw it with my daughters. They loved it. I loved it, and my yeah. daughters liked it more than the first one. So what do the critics know? Yeah, well, that, that's common, where you'll read some critical reviews, and you realize that they're called critics, so they feel like they have to say bad things about it. Particularly, I think they love saying bad things about movies that the masses love. Mm -hmm. And in this case, there is and, and look, the masses. Disney doesn't care what the critics say. As long as people go to see it and it raises a billion dollars, which I'm sure it will, who cares? I'm not a Star Wars guy. I know you are. You haven't seen it yet? Well, I have not. I've seen the first six. Yeah. All right. There's nine wow. of them. Okay. In, Where did you this, find the right. time? Well, no, that, that was back in the early 2000s, okay? Yeah, okay. Since I had a, a wife and kids, I haven't. That's right. why I'm behind. All right. It started 42 years ago. I mean, I had plenty of time back then, right? I mean, I remember. Star Wars Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, man, that was huge to me. It was. Yeah, it was it huge. Made a cultural uh, impact for sure. Yeah. Okay, next on the menu, Mike Polk and I go shopping on a ridiculously <laughs> strict budget to make over part of the newsroom. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Welcome back to Lunch Break. Last fall, Mike Polk and I uh, were talking. He found out that I'm this kind of mailbox makeover guy. So I sort of invited myself to come to his house and spruce up his mailbox. Mm, I saw that. I, I did my I, best. I, he went with it. <laughs> he I mean, did. He, he, he played along. I was impressed. He played along. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, in turn, he wanted to share one of his hobbies with me, and that is shopping for vintage furniture. Oh, man. And the <laughs> two of them, well, they decided to fix up the forgotten about area of the station. All right, we know it well, at least we do, right? Uh, with a trip to Habitat for Humanity's Restore. So as you know, this is what we have to work with. There's empty walls, it has no personality. It's a blank canvas. People would probably drop like thousands of dollars trying to fix something like this up. We don't need to do that. We're gonna think outside the box and we're gonna go find some good deals and fix this place up on the cheap. Oh, I like that. They gave us a $200 budget. 
Yeah, I know it doesn't seem like a lot. Where I'm taking us, that's gonna stretch a long way. All okay, right, good. trust me. I'm, I'm, look, I'm on team bull. Teach me, Let's teach go. me. Come on. All right. Don't worry, we're gonna make your place look great. <laughs> So what do you think? I think the possibilities are endless. I think it's interesting that we have a $200 budget that we have to work with. We could put like a little graphic here that says how much we have left to oh, spend. Oh, that's a good idea. My parents had a furniture store when I was a kid. Oh, they did? Yes, they did. Oh, so this is like the family business for it, you. It is. I actually have been on one end of a lot of these things, probably. Some of these <laughs> things I might have put in someone's house when I was a child. They got sick of it or died, and then it ended up here. I'm teaching him how to shop for uh, furniture. Vintage stereo record player combo. Oh, it's haunted it's... by the ghost of its <laughs> previous owner. No, it's sensing there's no record there, so it's not dropping the arm. I see. Oh, it's It not... would damage it's the needle. It's very advanced. That's purchase one. See, these are like the real men. When I'm walking down an aisle and it's like a bunch of real men like that, I just look at the ground. I'm just <laughs> don't like, make eye contact. I'm, not, yeah, I'm right. not, I don't know what you guys are talking about. They're like, we know, go find some fancy chairs, <laughs> fancy boy. <laughs> It looks like it's more expensive than it is. Maybe we could hire an artist to paint Channel 3 in the background. That's on a that really hill. good idea. We'll make Matt Wentz do it. I bet he could paint that. I'll bet he could too. Are we just assuming he's artistic? All right, well, we're going with this. He can do weather maps. This is going up. What do you think? I think that that's no? a great idea for TGI Fridays. Boom, 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 boom. We're going to need a cart. We're going to need a cart. <laughs> yeah, we do need a cart. Yeah, let's get a cart. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. This dude who's showing us around? Yeah. I'm gonna get him to give us a deal on that thing. Uh, on that on record, record player. player? I'm gonna yeah. go get it then. Well, yeah. Get it. And just, oh, we'll, watch, hey, play my game. Play my grift when you get up there. I'm just gonna let you Stick do with all my the talking. Grift. It's just too bad we're only on a $100 budget. Wish there was something we could do about this. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. Let's see now. <laughs> Put a drum roll in and post. Can we afford it? $126. What? We have $75. We can go get lunch. All right. Ah, here you go. Here's to gussying up the special projects unit. Doesn't this already feel like more? It feels more like home than it's it did homey. before. It yeah. is. I like it. Now let's put a, let's pretend there's a record playing on this. Put that in in post. <laughs> Can they do that? Can they add that and add it? Yeah. I see what you're doing there. Nice. Nice. Weird choice, Mambo number five. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't have that 45. But doesn't this feel good? It feels great. Wait until we get this thing painted. When this is painted, that's the th Channel 3 crest. Whole new world, everybody. <laughs> Wait a minute. We didn't, we never showed what you did with the crest. We'll show them later on. I've, yeah, I've had a lot of spare time. And I <laughs> fixed up that crest and the Navy thing and everything like that. And it looked pretty nice. <laughs> Yeah. It looked very nice. You took the USN off and uh -huh. you put a Channel 3 logo, but you painted it all up. I'm telling you, Dave, you got to see it. It's up in the yeah, special projects area. Yeah. No one ever goes up to our I, special projects place. I anyway. really wanted to show that off. I was really proud of what you did with that. That's very kind of you. Thank was you. there a mailbox? And no. Is there a mailbox up there? We couldn't no. find a decent mailbox. <laughs> no. Can you believe? That's probably why you never come up. But the lunch was $30. Mike knows the manager, so it was free. So he pocketed $74.91 on the deal. Eddie, yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> What's our next adventure? Have you decided yet? I want you to pick it because okay. I had, so, I literally, I had so much fun doing that. I laughed all day. This he guy really keeps was, me in stitches. He really was like a big kid the whole time. And he'd run over to me with something else from the, from the store. He's like, what about this? Maybe this would be good. I'm like, why don't you go put that down, sweetheart? Maybe he, he really did. <laughs> I felt like I was shopping with my wife. Yeah, that's cute, honey, but no. Good it, was, it was an honor to be here to watch that. <laughs> it was and fun. thanks for including me. Come on up to the yeah. special projects law from check And go out. watch, hey, go watch Mike do his comedy thing. Thank it, you. I guarantee you'll enjoy thanks it. Thanks for the plugs. We wrap lunch break after this.
Welcome back to lunch break. It's time to eat cookies, which is my favorite time of the day. It's actually the holiday season, and we know that you'll probably be making cookies. So we've brought in Julia Zumpano. She's a registered dietitian at Cleveland Clinic. Julia, thank you so much for coming here. And basically, the mission of this segment is to make delicious cookies, but not use all the ingredients that aren't so good for us. Absolutely. So tell us what we're going to do. What do we have? So the main three ingredients in a cookie would be flour, yeah. sugar, and fat, which is typically butter. Mm. So I targeted those three ingredients. Okay. We, so we have white flour here, so you can always use a grain-based flour to substitute to increase some fiber. Okay, so very I have good. So raw oats here. You can grind up the oats if you have a blender and make it very fine into a flour, okay. which would work better for a recipe. You can buy a whole grain flour as well. All right. Um, you can buy an almond meal flour, which would even cut more cal calories and carbohydrates. Mostly that substitution would be calorie based. Am I right? Yes, and adding fiber. And adding fiber. It's more okay. the fiber addition than so much the calories. Okay. Fiber keeps you full, keeps um, you know you hungry less and craving less. Okay. So it helps in, in this time of year. Now, I know the butter is just so bad for you, but man, it makes the cookies taste so good. It does. It makes it. They, the texture of the cookies definitely are enhanced by the fact that they're so oily and buttery. Yeah, so but we're gonna take the butter out and put what in it? Some place? applesauce. Really? Yes. Um, and that works. It works better for moisture bakery items. Okay. So breads, muffins, softer, like uh, brownies, something that it tends to be more of a moist bakery item. Right. When you're looking for flakiness or a kind of a crispier cookie, it's not going to work so well. Right, yeah, I can imagine right? it would be a problem. But so, I, I love this taste of applesauce. I think it would be great. Yeah, it, it's a good alternative. Okay. If butter adds up a tremendous amount of calories. So yeah. you're looking at, you know, 900 calories for a stick of butter. Really? So, yeah. What if I decided that I want to use a little bit of butter, but I want to use some applesauce too? Can I do that? Yes, and you, you may have to play around with it a little bit. Okay. Based on the recipe. Okay. Um, but anything you cut is going to be a significant amount of calories when you're looking at replacing with applesauce because okay. applesauce has 50 calories. Right. Okay. So, Very good. And the last one, the sugar, I know is so not the, good. The best way to do sugar is to use less. Most okay. recipes call for way too much sugar. Mm -hmm. I would say start with cutting by 25%, um, cut 25%, so use three quarters okay. of the amount of sugar the recipe calls for, and you usually can't tell a difference. Really? Yes. So, are you substituting that 25% uh, with anything else? No, just okay, so it out. why the uh, So then if you want to go further than 25%, like let's say you want to cut it in half, Okay. and you're finding that it just doesn't taste as good, Right. then adding something like some uh, dark chocolate, chocolate chips right. would be a great uh, addition. Now, it does say you some calories but more the fact that it's really beneficial in the form of you get polyphenols which are antioxidants mm -hmm. you have copper iron manganese fiber oh, in, good. in in dark chocolate but you're looking for the very dark chocolate with not a lot of sugar in it All right. but it adds a strong flavor so it may help enhance the flavor of a cookie that has been modified with less sugar. Very good. Taking the bad stuff out, replacing it with good stuff. Mm -hmm. Julia, thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Me. And the other thing is, if they're not as tasty, we probably won't eat as many of them. Exactly. So that's helpful. And that's too. helpful. <laughs> Very helpful. Much more lunch break right after this. Stay with us.
Okay, so what we've done here is we made this into our Channel 3 crest out of the thing we got from uh, the Salvation Army That's place. That's beautiful. Habitat place. And then over here, out of respect for the military, because we did remove the Navy thing from this thing, I made that and framed <laughs> it properly out of respect for uh, all of our troops. Mike Polk coming soon to HGTV. Bye, folks. Got <laughs> it Friday.